Hey, how's it going guys? This is Dave 2D and this is my review of the iPhone 6S and 6S Plus. So every other year, Apple brings out their S line and it's normally like a couple upgrades from the previous generation with a lot of hype. So this year, I was expecting that. I pre-ordered it. I thought I'd just be getting a couple upgrades that were overhyped, but I was a little surprised. Here's my review. So like last year's iPhones, the boxes are embossed, but now they have different colored lids so you can ID the color of the phone. When you open up the box, nothing's really changed. I mean, it's got the same charger, same cable, same earbuds, same SIM tool, same stickers. The measurements of the phones have changed a bit. They're a little bit thicker and heavier, and you might think that these changes wouldn't be noticeable, but if you've used the iPhone 6 or 6 Plus extensively, you'll notice a difference. It's more noticeable on the 6 Plus, but both of them just feel beefier than they used to. Now they're still extremely slippery, so you wanna get a case or at least a skin for the phone. And if you're wondering, a properly cut iPhone 6 skin will not fit on the iPhone 6S. Okay, no, for real, I actually tried, and you can see that it's short by a few millimeters. Just get a proper fitting one. D-Brand does some really good ones. So this year they're made out of a 7000 series aluminum alloy. It might look the same, but it's a significantly stronger material. It's more expensive, it's harder to machine, and it's more expensive to machine, but after what Lou did to the iPhone 6, it's probably worth it. There's a new color this year that they call rose gold. Now, rose gold is difficult to capture on film because it's a subtle color to begin with, and then everyone's screen is a little bit different, so they're all gonna reproduce this color differently. But this ring here is rose gold, and it makes the iPhone 6S look really pink in comparison. If it's lit with more yellow lighting, like incandescent bulbs or like an evening sunset, it does look rose gold, but yeah, I think most people are gonna think it looks more pink. The speaker down here is the same from last year. It tends to fire away from you when you're watching stuff, but the sound quality has always been pretty good and it gets reasonably loud. And everything around the phone is the same. So down here, we also have the headphone jack, two mics, lightning connector, and on the right side, we have the SIM tray and the power button. There's nothing up top. And then lastly, on the left, we have notification switch and volume controls. It's the same screen as last year, so I'm not gonna go into much detail. It's a very good screen, but it's starting to show its age. A lot of people think that iPhone screens are like the best in the business. Samsung phones just have way higher resolution and they're still brighter, they have higher contrast ratio, better color accuracy, better viewing angles, and they're even more like power efficient. Now that's not to say that the iPhone doesn't have a really good screen. It does, but it's not the best screen. If you need to have the best screen out there, you gotta look at OLED tech on Android phones or a quantum dot IPS like the LG G4. So for the past couple of years, a lot of Android phones have been able to record some really crispy 4K footage. And even though the iPhone 6 had great images, it sucked that you couldn't record in 4K. But they finally bumped up the camera to a 12 megapixel. Photos in bright light are really good. Photos in dim light are really good for a smartphone. But the photos on the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus were already really good. They're just higher res now. So for regular use, you're not gonna be noticing much of a difference in image quality unless you're doing a lot of zooming and cropping. Now between the iPhone 6S and cameras on Android devices like the G4, the S6, and the Note 5, it's really hard to call a winner. Like they're all really, really good. I've noticed that for macro photos, the iPhone 6S doesn't focus as quickly or sometimes properly, but I do feel that the color, especially in videos, are more true to life on the iPhones. I do wanna compare the cameras between the top tier flagship phones, so I'll probably do a camera test in the future. In the meantime, if you're interested in buying the iPhone 6S or 6 Plus, you will really, really like the camera. It's excellent. One thing to keep in mind though, 4K videos eat up space really quick. You use up over a gig of storage in a three minute video. So if you like taking high res videos, I'd stay away from the 16 gig model. Live photos are pretty cool. You can turn it off if you want, but it's fun if you take a lot of pictures of people. Sometimes it's cool to capture the full moment instead of just a still picture. It eats up a little space, like maybe 60, 70% more for the movie clip. The clips aren't particularly high quality and the frame rates are pretty choppy, but it's fun in the right situation. The front facing camera has been bumped up to five megapixel. It's quite a bit better than last year's. So this was taken in a very dark closet, like almost pitch black, but it has a new feature that it can crank up the screen brightness for a moment to act as a flash. And I think this looks a lot better than an LED flash because it's like a full panel of light, right? So it's not a point source like an LED. So you just get more diffuse lighting. I think Kim Kardashian's gonna love this flash. 
Performance across the board has been bumped up. So starting off, fingerprint sensor, it's quite a bit faster. It's at the point where you don't have to wait on it at all. Like you just kind of press your button and the phone unlocks. The Taptic engine is a lot quieter and has stronger vibrations, so that's kind of nice. And of course, we gotta throw in some benchmarks. So I gotta be honest, even running iOS 9, the iPhone 6 never felt slow at all, but the 6S feels that much snappier. These phones now have two gigs of RAM, which helps with multitasking, and it's actually noticeable on the 6S Plus. When you have a ton of apps open, that slight stutter isn't there anymore when you're switching between apps. Siri performance is the same, Wi-Fi speeds seem to be the same. I mean, I don't have crazy fast internet to really push it. And battery life seems identical to last year despite the smaller batteries. So with light to average use, you're gonna get a day of battery on the 6S and about a day and a half on the 6S Plus. I think 3D Touch is the biggest feature of these phones. It's the same mechanic as Force Touch, but it's a lot more intuitive to use because of how we already use our phones. Now the support for this feature is pretty limited right now. Even a lot of the included apps from Apple don't support it yet, but it's completely open to developers and you can see the potential. It makes phone interactions faster and more efficient and things like setting alarms, scheduling, taking notes, switching between two apps, checking emails, anything that needs multiple inputs is gonna be faster with 3D Touch. And there's gonna be new games like squashing bugs or squeezing zits or popping bubble wrap. Whatever it is, it's just gonna be a better experience. Now the tech just launched, but the hardware and software are so well integrated, it doesn't feel janky or gimmicky at all. It just straight up works and it's straight up functional. Okay, recap for the iPhone 6S and 6S Plus. They're rocking the same displays as last year, same resolutions, pretty good screens, but not the best out there. It now has pressure sensitive 3D touch, which is really well implemented already, and it's pretty much guaranteed to get even better over time. They both have a new five megapixel front facing camera with retina flash that actually takes pretty good photos, a fingerprint sensor that's noticeably faster than last year's, all covered in Apple's ion glass that still shatters if you drop it hard on its face. And on the back, we have a 12 megapixel camera that takes surprisingly fun live photos, really good regular photos, and equally amazing videos up to 4K. On the bottom, we have a single speaker that sounds pretty good despite its location. And we also get that prestigious S stamp on the back of the phone. You gotta let people know you're rocking the new one, right? You're not buying this phone for like the new tech. You want that S stamp for its status. All right, and on the inside, we're rocking batteries that are sadly smaller than last year's, but they seem to give the exact same battery life, which is okay. There's also the A9 processor in there, which is a really fast performer and extremely energy efficient. It's noticeably faster than the A8. And lastly, non-expandable storage that starts off at a really silly 16 gigs and goes up to 128 gigs. And all of this is in a package that is thicker and heavier than last year, but stronger. And pricing starts at $650. Okay, some closing thoughts. When the iPhone 4S came out with Siri and when the 5S came out with the fingerprint sensor, they were really cool pieces of tech, but they didn't dramatically change the way that we use our phones. I mean, you can only use fingerprint detection and voice commands so often, but with 3D Touch, it inherently changes the way that you use your phone. I mean, everything that you do on it can theoretically be affected by 3D Touch. And Apple did a really good job implementing it so far. And as developers pick it up and figure out what people want and figure out what people need, the potential for it is massive. I'm really excited about that. Now, whether or not it's worth the price to entry, it's a very expensive phone and there's parts of the 6S and 6S Plus that feel really dated. I mean, the screen, the 16 gigs of RAM, those shouldn't exist in 2015 on a flagship. So that kind of bums me out. Um, but I will say this, for a S variant from Apple, it's a very, it's the best one. It's the best S line that Apple has released. So they have that going for it. If you're coming from Android, I don't think there's anything compelling to pull an Android user in. Like if you're deep into the Android ecosystem, it's a cool piece of tech, 3D Touch. It's not enough to kind of pull you in, not yet at least. Uh, that's the end of the review. Hope you guys liked it. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. Now there's one other thing. If you noticed, the thumbnail to this video was blue. It was a blue phone. It's real. It will exist. Giveaway soon. Stay tuned. It's been nice. I'll see you guys next time.